You want to know how to plaster a wall, most likely a plasterboard wall. And this is a room done previous and the back wall is the wall I'm going to show you how to plaster. So if you're serious about learning how to plaster and you want to plaster rooms like this, or maybe just not as, as much detail as this, you're in the right place. This is the wall. It's already plastered. You can see it's drying out and I'm going to show you how to plaster it all the way from top to bottom and give you as much details as possible so you can get the best results. Preparation time, cut a scrape off any excess drips or plaster from previous walls or ceilings. Also if there's dust and dirt that will need sort of brushed off and cleaned down, you'll need to scrim up your joints like so, have that on a previous video. Also check for screws or nails that's fixed the plasterboard and make sure they're all in nice and flush. So what's next? Fill in my scrims. And obviously I have my plaster mixed up and all. I do have videos specifically on how to mix plaster. And you know, you might wanna check them out as well because mixing the plaster is like 70% of the job, having the right mix for the right job. So yeah, I just cover up my scrim tapes, guys. There's no need to cover the ones in the corners as you'll get plenty on them as you go. So it's just as simple as putting a light coat over them and the reason to do that is it helps bury them and make sure there's no scrims shine through as it looks very untidy if a wee bit does shine through uh, or any wee bubbles or anything on the scrim. But you know, you don't have to do this part, you can skip it and just first coat the whole wall and then second coat but I do find this helps. Then I'm going to work from top left to top right and then bottom left to bottom right. So much like the previous video we've done um, on basically where we were rendering the wall and giving you all the tips on how to render the wall, Devil floated ready for the skin that basically it's sort of very similar methods. Obviously plasterboards usually lower suction background than most but this one the boards are slightly older as it's been sitting ready for a bit of time so you can expect these boards to be a wee bit drier and possibly set a wee bit quicker but you know i i haven't noticed too much it's it's all went pretty straightforward to me and again even though this is just the undercoat the first coat the neater you go the easier everything will become from you know from your your next coat on to just trailing up so again try and leave as less lines and fill out what needs to be filled out now so that later on it it just becomes handier and easier for yourself just using the hop up here find these wee benches quite safe you can use stilts possibly milk crates step ladders doesn't really matter just something that's going to be handy to move around light possibly um, just so you're not counting big heavy ladders about um, later will make for later work and you'll have more energy and strength for the walls ahead. I've set board up out in the next room so I do have a wee bit of walking to do to go back and forward but that's because I'm doing a few walls in that room also and I thought this is the perfect setup to show how to DIY plaster a wall um, but like I think everybody kind of wants to build a wall I think nearly everybody wants to plaster a wall too um, so why not show you on this is a pretty average size wall not not too big again you possibly would be better maybe starting in a cupboard wall or something but if you've built that one stud wall or something and you fancy having a go this is definitely the video for you so the tools I'm using is a Rafina trowel and a pointsman's hawk and obviously we hop up there uh, there is, if you notice under the window, there's actually a Tezak Hawk um, sorry, a Tezak Trowel and a Ragnai Hawk and I think there's a couple of other bits and pieces there tussle brushes and angle trowels um, again, the drill we're using we're using Ruby drills here uh, Ruby cordless drill and the Ruby corded drill just because 
it's it's handier. Don't need the yellow box for the big Rufina Mega Mixer. But if it was a bit of a bigger job, again, probably would tend to go for the Rufina Mega Mixer. The plaster used is Carlite plaster, and it's not very much different than multi skim. I do find it that tiny little bit easier to use and nicer to use. But multi skim is good, also, guys, and there's literally no difference between the two on how you actually mix it, apply it, and finish it. It's all, it's all, it's all gypsum plaster. It all goes the same way. Um, the other thing I'll want to point out is the ceilings actually plastered their previous this wall, so I've already done quite a bit of work, and you can see it actually starting to set off even further there with the wee brown spots. Um, so if you were doing something like that where you just finished a wall and you're going to do an opposite wall and you're going to have what I call a bit of a soft corner, you want to go very slowly and gently up against it, otherwise you're going to chip it and leave lots of wee score marks which won't be too easy to repair and will look rubbish basically. You'll basically ruin the whole corner of the opposite wall. Um, the ways to avoid that is let it set off completely brown. You might not have that time to do that, so you might just have to be very careful and don't damage the wall basically. Um, not, not, not really too many great tips on how not to do that. Um, so just really taking your time and not scoring it. If, like I say, you're only doing one wall, you should have a good bit of time. And like I always say, don't panic. Plaster has a tendency to know when you're panicking and bite you. And it will bite you hard because if it starts setting and it's not, you know, you haven't got it in shape, it's going to be very hard work to get it in shape. And you'll notice there that I just sort of threw loads on. And I'm sort of taking it back off now and neatening it up as it went past. And that's why I brought this for that close up. So, we've almost got the whole first coat on, and I usually keep it nice and neat. I'm sure some of you have noticed the big slop in the middle there, the big line left. Um, and let's find out if I actually notice that before I switch the camera off for the next coat. But, yeah, it's nice to get that first coat all on, guys, and make sure you've covered the whole wall. Got it as neat as possible. Um, you can sort of wash out and take a bit of a break there. Or, you know, you can maybe mix another bit, put another wall on, and then by the time you get that wall on, this wall will be ready for its second coat. That's usually the way I go about things. Um, again, you can actually second coat with the same mix, but it is better, especially if you're new to the trade, that you do it in two separate mixes because it'll keep, it'll keep your skin fresher for longer and give you more work, workable time with it. So it's not going off on you. And let's find out, did I notice that big bit? Yeah, there was no way I was going to leave it like that. Second coat time. And again, same as before. Left to right along the top. And then left to right along the bottom. Sometimes if sometimes it does speed me up when I'm trialling or even sometimes when I'm coating. I'll do left... Left as a section, middle as a section, and right as a section, but again, I'll always start at the top and work my way down the wall. So sometimes it saves me time, or it feels like it saves me time. It all sort of depends. And you can see the ceiling's actually set up more. I think I actually polished it in between times. Well, not so much polished it, but just a quick final trial with the Rafina Superflex 3. Um, again, you, it's a trial you don't necessarily need for plastering, but in my opinion, it, it will actually it'll save you a lot of time and a lot of hard 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 work. It'll make it that little bit easier for yourself. But again, everything can be done with the one proper broken in steel trial. So it's all up to yourselves, guys, how you just wanna go about things. Um, but yeah, along the top and along the bottom, and I can't stress it enough. Keep it as flat, neat, and tidy as possible, as it will really pay you back tenfold when it comes to trialing up. Um, the other thing is, you may be asking, why am I second coating the wall? Why, if I coated the scrims and give it a coat, why is that not enough? 
and basically, like I said previous, if you second coat it, gives you that bit more time. Um, the stuff isn't going to be picking up on you, draining, soaking into the plaster board, um, and you know the plaster has been designed to go three mil up to I think probably between three to five millimeters thick. So that's that's the that's its strength is that coat is going to be its its best strength, guys. So if you only do one coat, you're not going to really hit that limits. Some of you may be asking, well, how come you can't just put 3 mil on? And you so yes, you sort of can, and you may get away with it, but the bigger the walls and stuff and the ceilings, the less chance you're going to get away with it. And again, you will be weakening the plaster by just doing it in one coat. Plaster can get its strength by building up in layers. Um, I sort of touched base on that slightly with the, the rendering as well. Um, especially with my scratch coats and stuff, why you sort of, you know, it's you're actually making it stronger by building it up in layers over time, other than just trying to do it all in one go. Um, possibly as well because if you try and do it all in one piece, you know, it's kind of made bond to itself more than bonding into the wall. You know, when you're putting your first coat in, it's bonding in, it's soaking in, it's drying in. Your next coat freshens up the first coat, but still, it's all soaking in. So you can imagine it, it's all getting pulled into the wall, all ni nice, nice and even. And, you know, if it dries out too quick, then you're going to have to hit loads of water, and you're going to dilute the plaster, you're going to weaken it. Also, some plasters do take quite a lot off in the trial, so if you go with one coat, you really are minimised to, to not be able to do that. Um, so, by far, I will always recommend two coats, guys, and I'll always recommend covering up your scrims with a coat beforehand, so technically your scrim cloths have all got that sort of third coat on them, but, you know, again, you can sort of skip that if you're confident your scrims all nice and neat, um, but I do that whether or not the board's taped, just covered up. It's the way I'm sort of taught, and the way I'm, I think is t the best way to go about it. And again, I'm working straight to the skirtings here, right down to the floor. Um, you can keep it up an inch or two, and the skirting will, will cover that, no problem. But this is upstairs, I have no risk of worrying about any damp or anything like that to her, so I'm going right to the floor, trying to keep it as neat and tidy as possible. I find a quick scraper in the bottom at the end and a brush and it, the room does come up very tidy and clean. So touched about this sort of previous videos that I'll try and do a hawk and trowel sort of how to hold it and how to use it, how to load the hawk, how to load the trowel, how to then apply it to the wall. So hopefully I'm getting a wee bit of insight to use here with how I'm actually getting it on the wall and you can see I'm putting it on, and here I'll put on two bits here, three, so it's sort of all on, but that does all need neatened up, so if you are going to do it that way, I'm purposefully leaving this line to show you how I'm chasing it into the, the far corner here, and off the main part of the wall, and if you pick out stones like that guys, fill in the holes, and if you find any stones, do pick them out, because they do have a tendency to come loose near the end when you're nearly finished and ripping a big score, a big line up your wall, which will not be nice. So, you can see how, when you work in close enough, and then you can pull out from the angle and tidy up that whole corner. And just a way to get another wee drop of plaster, as just to make sure you have enough on, as you do not want that wall one coated, you do want the two on it. So you can see, big slaps on there. Sort of trying to do this on purpose, just to give you the feeling of what, what I'm actually really am doing. And again, just taking it from the corner then, so that the wall on my left has always been left perfect. And clean, and smooth, and flat. Ready for the trial lamp. So, here we are with the first trial in. It's more of a flattening in. And again, you'll see I don't flick water all over the wall here. I'm literally just using the tussle brush. 
And again, you'll notice now the ceiling's more or less completely set, brown off solid. And, you know, I can go a wee bit harder against the ceiling now, as it is actually formed up harder and set off. But basically, trailing from left to right again. And that you can work all the lines, iron it all out that way. And, you know, just keep at it, guys. And... You know, if there's something there that doesn't look right, then it's obviously not right. You need to trowel it, tidy it up, fill it in. And I don't need a lot of water here because it's just really a flattening in. So all you're doing is flattening in, tidying up. Again, you're not trying to take anything off. Hopefully you've got it neat with your, your first and second coat. But if not, this is what this stage is all about. Getting it really, really neat. Taking the lines out as best as possible. And this stage, it, you certainly don't really need much water. And all I'm doing is cleaning my trowel constantly so that I can keep that angle clean. If your trowel is dirty at the back, you will deposit plaster onto the top of the ceiling, on the top of the wall where the ceiling and the wall meets. If you have dirty back of the trowel, it'll, you know, once you come up, you're going to deposit like we plaster icicles all over the ceiling so you don't don't want that so keep the back of your trowel clean and again you can always run the tussle brush or your, even your water brush across the angle just to keep that angle nice and clean like so and you know if you're doing this from the very very start by the end the angle will it will be sitting 100 percent you won't need to be worrying about very much at all and you'll always notice that it kind of pull the angle up up and down basically and left to right so that it's nice and square I don't do it just always in one direction I'm going down and I'll pull across as well guys so I find that stops any curvy corners that you know they're not meant to be curvy on this side it's supposed to be nice and square and straight so you know it's to me that's the technique you want to do is across and down and you'll get a good feel of the wall at that stage what, what shape it's at and like I said, this I don't need much water on this wall whatsoever for this. Um, and again, I'm trying to exaggerate the lines here. Um, I'm finding it a bit difficult because I do try to keep it very neat as I go. But basically you're getting the idea that you're bringing all the lines from one side of the wall to the other side. Leaving them at the back of the trowel so that one side of the trowel is finished. And the back side's the side where you're going to keep on troweling up and finishing off. So, a subscriber once asked to sort of try and show off the angle of the trowel. And basically, at this stage, I'm trying to keep it flat, as you can see. They also asked for the noise of the trowel, but it's kind of hard to pick up. Um, especially with all the background noises, there's other people working in this, this build as well, so... You don't always get a nice sound of it. But I will try and get a section. Here. Giving a bit of a bit of a noise. And guys, so basically the angle of your trial is very important. Um as the flatter you keep the trowel at the earlier stage when you're, you're first troweling up what I call the flattening in and then this would be called the first wet trowel where you actually have to apply water to trowel the wall up and basically if you open up the trowel more you're cutting, you're cutting the plaster more and you will have to do that with each stage you'll have to open out the degree of the angle of the trowel just slightly and again, if it's turn, you're going to have to want to add water. And I'll try and get this up close just to show and demonstrate exactly what it is I'm trying to explain here. And you'll notice I'll always try to keep that, that water to the bottom of the trowel. So that I'm, I'm pulling it away from the, the finished wall. As you can see, I'm chasing the water away. Sometimes I flatten it in a wee bit if there's a bit of a... A wee bit of an imperfection or a wee bit of a hole. 
And this, guys, is this would be your first wet trial. As you can see, the lane there, left side, is completely flat. And I'm bringing the lane all the way into the corner on the right hand side. And again, some people ask why I don't I use a spare. And basically, I'm a bit sort of old school where I like things to last. And any spare I've ever had has never lasted a crack. If you, you know, if you know one and you think it's brilliant, let me know what make it is. And I'll maybe try and review it or test it out myself and see what I think. I do like using sprayers, but I just think they're a brush is gonna last you far longer. A brush is gonna be able to clean your trowel. When brushes are done and dead and they're no good, a brush can wash out your bucket, you know. A sprayer, to me they get a bit dirty and they break. You pump them up too hard, they break, you know. I've just never had one that has lasted very, very long at all. You know, you put them in the van, they break. You put them in a bucket of tools, they break. Um, I know refining and stuff do them too, but again, I'm old school. I like my things to last, and that's why I actually like refining astrals. Why I like their brushes, they end up fine. They last a long time. But, yeah, I did have a lawnmower once that didn't last very long, and... I've, we've had kitchen appliances that don't last very long and you know like I say any tools or anything I ever use on the channel if it's good you'll constantly see it on the channel just such as the refiner skimming trials that I use um, the pointsman hawk that has not bent out of shape one bit it's still as straight as the day that I've got it so you know to me companies that make things to last should be rewarded with our loyalty um, companies that make things to break should be left left in the past where they belong you know I think in the past things were made to last and then we've got to the stage where things have been made made to break and I think that should now become the past where companies that are making things to last a year so it's out of their warranty and breaks or whatever many months they need at the last so they don't have to give you a refund or repair or replace item I think them companies should be left behind guys and the likes of tool companies and even anything, ev everything in general products, cars, whatever, vans, anything that lasts that I think it should be shown a bit more loyalty and if they are that bit dear then if it's going to get you more time in the long run, we'll have to all start looking in the long run. It's no good just looking, you know, a week ahead. We'll have to start looking a bit further ahead ourselves. Um, I know sometimes if it's cheap and that's all you've got, that's all you've got at the time. It's, it is a pinch. But that's why, like I say, tools that last, I will keep on showing them. And I'll be happy to show them and happy to use them. So that's again the refiner stuff that I use constantly over and over again they're the the products the likes of the skimming trials stainless steel trials the mega mixer um, all those things have lasted a great deal of time and you know I feel like that they're really well built there's good quality steel used um, I don't feel like they're ever gonna let me down and you know, I'm getting great results with it over years and years and years, so I can't see why anybody else can't. Um, and again, I don't think Refine is the, the dearest trial on the market for its quality, so, you know, I've had dearer trials from possibly a bigger brands that just bend within a year. Um, don't think that's good enough. Um, I know it can happen, a one-off thing can happen, um, but I just genuinely think that things at last we should maybe show loyalty to them and you know stop getting in the idea of that everything should be replaced now I know if you drop a super flex trial it will possibly break but again that's sort of our fault for not looking after it and the, th the thing is about that too guys if, if a trial is to break bend the rivets to pop you have to drop a super flex and it breaks you know, bends out of shape and it's no good for plaster anymore. It's you know, it's not necessarily throw it away. It's adapt and keep that as a scraping trowel. I have a super flex trowel that's bent out of shape and it's kept for sh for scraping up. 
um, for cleaning. You know, something you wouldn't use your good skimming trials or your good floating rendering trials for. Keep it for that. Um, we're getting on well here with the, the, the second trial, guys. Hopefully, hopefully my chattering on hasn't annoyed you too much. But basically, we're still going here nice and neat to the floor and back up. Um, and again, if a child does go and wear out, um, you know, you can always watch that video and see how I turn them into smaller trials, basically, and how they're still good to go. So, yeah, enough of my trying to save you his money. Anyway, so down to the, the bottom, keeping the bottom trial up neat as well, guys. You might not want to touch the ground with your trial as you can pull up stones and dirt into the wall. Which can damage the wall basically as a trial, so you might want to sort of stay that half inch up off the floor. But if you have been very good and you've cleaned that floor and you've maybe tossed a brush the floor and stuff as well, then you'll possibly be able to trial from the floor, you know, create a complete angle with that. And um, you know, that's fine, you won't get any dirt up into the wall from there. So it's always good to get near the end, guys. Um, but just because you're at the end, don't take your eye off the ball, keep keep your eye. If there is wee stones, any wee hers came off the brush or anything, anything that's going to get in the way, make sure and fill them, pick them out, fill them up, trial it up smooth before you move on. And again, just left to right. Does plastering is quite repetitive, that's why people get repetitive injuries basically in their shoulders and their wrists and their elbows and their hands. Um, and their backs, basically, because you're you are doing a, a similar thing over and over again, and you can't get sort of repetitive strain injuries. Um, so, you know, you are going on the wall, and basically every time you trial the wall, the pressure and the angle of the trial increases. So, doesn't necessarily get any easier for you. I do think, though, with more experience and technique and skill, that each time you pass the wall will be that bit easier. So something I do find for the third trial guys that helps reduce that pain and that's uh, our final Superflex 3. Again the Superflex 2 and Superflex 1 are actually more flexible than I found this one to be. This one's the stiffest one, but you know, I, f I find this one brilliant. So I can't, can't, I do have the uh, the Superflex one, but this is one seems to be the one I just keep putting my hand on. So there must be a reason. I must just must prefer it. Must trust it more, and um, or maybe it just feels that bit more robust, like I was talking about earlier too. But again, it's a great trial. I feel like it still gets the pressure needed and takes a bit of pressure off my arms so that's what we really want um, guys I'm trying to leave the sounds in as was requested was the noise of the trial as some subscribers thought that it might help again let me know if you find it irritating or relaxing maybe some of you are actually here watching just trying to relax um, and if so let me know that I'll maybe I'll maybe do a video just with some plastering and just plastering alone with the sounds of the trial. But yeah, ang seeing angles pretty much finished at this stage. That's why you, you notice I don't even really need to toss a brush at this stage, I'm just trying up. And not loads of water, just brushing the water and trial off as I go. Again, somebody did ask me before, am I not worried about brushing the wall? Not at all, and don't worry about very much things, and especially worrying about brushing a bit of water on the wall with a nice soft skimming brush. It's not a problem to me. Um, again, if you want to just splice a wee bit of water on, so be it, guys. And um, get that done. And um, there we are, still clean the angle anyway. Um, good to get into good habits, guys. Um, bad to get into bad habits. So, the more of this channel I think you watch, the better habits you will get. Um, again, this wall is practically finished at this stage. I could have probably walked away and it probably would have painted up 100%, but I 
find when you give it that last trial. It, it, you just lower any risks of any fat marks on the wall or any wee small holes, pinholes that you've missed. Things like that. You just reduce all, all the chance of that. Um, if you heard a wee squeak there guys, that actually can end up turn. But what that noise was, was actually the walls too dry, so we just needed that wee bit more water. I think it just didn't want to go too mad around that socket that was there, because you can find water will drip out of the socket after you've traveled it. So, you can see you're not hearing the wall squeaking anymore, or as much anyway. But I may be moving a bit too fast for you here, guys. Um, but if you want to slow down the video and watch the technique that I'm using, it's very similar to every other method beforehand of going from left to right and just I'm just chasing the water away. You'll notice the wall is turning brown and that's this is the exact timing that you want. You want it to start peppering like that where it's just starting to, to set up and I found that that gives the absolute loveliest, loveliest finish. It's you know it doesn't it's not necessarily p polished, um but it is it's smooth and straight and it's flat. Um again, given the walls are polished at the end, it's not necessarily a bad thing, guys. You don't need the need to do it, but I tend to find if you do go around the whole room at the end and give it a wee quick light dry trial, that you will make sure you have no watermarks. There's no holes that you've missed. This is like you know this is just an extra eyeball around the whole job. Your angles are clean. And basically, there's no splats on any of the walls. So, just some nice footage of all the work finished up. And I really do hope that this plaster tutorial on how to plaster a stud wall has helped you. And again, you know, everybody's at a different level. And I'm sure this video will help you get to higher levels of plastering, guys. No doubt. And why not go ahead and watch some more videos and get some more understanding and learn new tips, tricks and get some advice from a plasher that's been doing it for many of years.